Hey there, welcome to another Curtis Stage video tutorial. This video tutorial is in Illustrator and it's demo number three. We're gonna talk about the Pathfinder tool and how we can manipulate shapes in Illustrator. So let's get started. So when I open up Illustrator, I want to click Create New and I'm just gonna use a basic document here. Once this opens up, five by five uh, custom size inches, no bleed, one artboard, and I'm going to click Create. So now that I have my Illustrator artboard open, in Photoshop, of course, that's called a canvas, you'll see that uh, we have a set of tools in here that all are vector drawing tools. And what's kind of interesting about using vectors is you can make some complex drawing Okay, so once we have our Illustrator document open, I want to click on the Rectangle tool and I want to make a fill of any color and then no stroke. So I'm going to pick no stroke, which would click right on this down arrow and right over there. So I've got a red fill, no stroke, and now I can create a box on my artboard. Now what I want to do is go to my black arrow tool, click off this or maybe move it, click off of it go to my rectangle tool, but this time pick the ellipse tool, switch the color, so I don't care what color you pick, switch the color, close that, still no stroke, and I'm gonna draw a second path or second object, which of course these are both paths in layer one. If I open this up, you can see I've got two paths here. If I go to my black arrow tool, I can move these. Of course, if I go to my gray arrow tool, my direct select, I can click on these and edit anchor points, right? We've learned how to do that in demo number one. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my black arrow tool. Got both these selected. Now, this tool that we're gonna to learn today is called the Pathfinder, and what this allows me to do is almost kind of like a cookie cutter, allow me to cut into shapes using other shapes. So I'm gonna to go to Window and Pathfinder, and when this tool opens up, you'll see, I'm bring it right up here, I've got a set, and we're gonna go through some of these. So to make this Pathfinder tool work, not all of these are really you know, useful to be honest. I, I use about five of them, but we'll go through a couple of them. So to use this Pathfinder, we have to select both of the objects. So I can drag select over the two, or I could go over to my layer one and click both objects by clicking everything that's in layer one right there. Or alternately, I can click that one and hold down shift and click this one and then I've got them both selected. So there's multiple ways to make selections. You'll see that my, my box is around both of the objects and I, I can size them together. It's almost like I grouped them now, but I didn't. Okay, so I've got these both selected and now what I wanna do is just click the very first uh, Pathfinder shape mode, which is Unite. So watch what happens when we do this. So it's gonna unite the two objects together. This is interesting. So what's gonna happen here is you're gonna get both objects are gonna take on the foreground color of, or the object that was in the foreground, sorry. The object that's in the foreground, both objects are gonna take on that color, see that? Now, even more interesting, if I go to my direct select tool, you'll see that the anchor points had been created here. This is one single object. For me to draw that with the pen tool would probably be difficult. So I'm gonna Command Z, undo, get used to that in this demo. So now I'm gonna to go to the second, I'm gonna select both of these, right? Got them both selected, drag select over them if they were already selected, and go to my second one. This is called minus front. It's gonna cut out the thing that was in the front. And that's kinda of cool because now we've got a chunk taken out of this object. All right, Command Z, undo, got them both selected. Now I'm gonna go here, this one's interesting, it's gonna take the intersecting part, so that's that part right there, of these two objects and only leave that part. It takes a lot of forethought to use that one. You have to really be planning stuff out. This would be good if you had like a, you know, complex drawing and then you, uh, you know, draw it out on paper first maybe and then you bring it in and, and uh, do this with that. But anyway, so this is intersect, command Z. And this one right here is exclude. So that's gonna exclude, it's the opposite of this, it's gonna take that part out. Now this one I think is something that you would probably use quite a bit. So that's pretty cool. And then it's gonna turn both of the shapes into the foreground color um, of the last shape that you drew. Now when I go to my direct select tool here, you'll see that in actuality there are two separate objects. 
So it did cut them at those two anchor points, which is kind of cool too. So this can be really good for logo design. Okay, Command-Z a few times if you move stuff around and drag select over both those. And you can be in your direct select tour tool or your selection tool for this. All right, so when I go down to the next row, this one I use quite a bit. Now, when I click it, it doesn't seem like anything happened, but actually quite a bit happened. So when I go to my black arrow tool, each right selects everything. But when I go to my gray arrow tool, my direct select tool, each one of these objects is now a separate object. So it cut everything, but it kept everything intact. And notice it didn't change the background color of into the foreground color. So that's pretty cool. So that is this one right here in Pathfinder. That's the divide tool. So I really like that one. Let's go to the next one. I've got them both selected. Again, you have to have your, your two objects selected for this to work. And then I go here to trim. It looks like nothing happened at first, but of course, took the chunk out like that. Instead of deleting this like minus front, it keeps it there and now you've got both objects. So you can make the Pepsi logo or something. Okay, so Command Z, undo. And then I've got them both selected. And then I go to this third one, which is merge. And it's gonna merge them all together. And essentially, I keep this shape here, selects out of that. Really not much, too much of a difference between those two. So I really don't use that very often let me go back and then the last one that I want to show you is the crop tool which takes the intersecting part now this is interesting it takes the intersecting part so it's like intersect but with one main difference it keeps the foreground object the object that's on top and now what could be cool with that is I could add a stroke here and do something like this right see some sort of Dragon Ball Z logo thing happening like this. So this would be hard for me or a lot of work for me to draw that with the pen tool or try to, you know, create this, but this is quick and easy with this. And of course I can manipulate any of these anchor points after the fact. So here's an anchor point. Oh, that's interesting. It kept that part to this background shape. That's cool. I didn't even know that was going to happen there. So the, the, this circle still had uh, was intact and I had its anchor point underneath this shape. So it's kind of fun. That makes for kind of a cool start to a logo. So you can see that the Pathfinder is something that would really come in handy when you want to draw objects pretty quickly. The last two I don't use very much. So I'm not even going to show you those. Uh, it's minus back and then outline. So I'm going to keep kind of keep those out of the tutorial. It doesn't really matter. You're not going to use those. So hopefully that was a good tutorial for you. This is, of course, on the Pathfinder. Being able to edit shapes, multiple shapes within the Pathfinder. It's been another Curtis Stage tutorial. We'll talk to you soon.